Welcome back to the studio at Comedy Club. <laughs> <laughs> For some other reason, we've not been able to, to have a straight video today. Demai will cut to some of the footage later on in the video. If you're wondering why we're laughing, it's at the end of this video. Anyway, my name is Yaku. Behind the camera is Demai. As per usual, we're a team. Yes, we are a team. <laughs> we are dealing with the second part of the video on laser welding. We had questions coming through from you that we thought we'd take to the professionals. We went to Freeform Fabrication in Stevenage and we spoke to product specialist Matt. This is the second part of the video. The first video is linked in the description. We're hoping that these videos that we've made will answer most of your questions. Without any further ado, let me show you the rest, the second part of the interview with Matt. Do Freeform advise with or without argon? If yes, with argon, what are the main benefits? The dados don't come with it as standard. It's something you can add um, if you want to. For me, you don't need argon other than to work on titanium. So right. titanium, if you fire the laser at it, it sparks. And right. I've tested it, it sparks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Um, yeah, yeah. Literally, you just see it light up the yeah. chamber. So yeah, obviously, that's something you don't want to be doing. So you need argon and to make, make an effective weld on titanium you you need to have that arc on there if you have any american followers they they may disagree and maybe in the comments they can answer why a lot of people in america will use argon and recommend argon heavily mm. when using laser welding there's not many in the uk that do mm. it takes out the oxidation so when you fire of on the metal it blackens up right if you use argon that won't happen if you had to fire um, on top of the black though would that be it helps it helps your next shot. Right, so it's not necessary. Because it's the same as using black marker pen. It's going to be more effective. Yeah, yeah. Like I say about we've tested the ring suck joins yeah. and putting them up two sizes. If that's not strong enough without argon, mm. realistically, you're going to be polishing it anyway. Yeah, so, but it goes back on the bench immediately. Yeah, exactly. So you're, you're going to be polishing it to take off the blackness mm. when you finish the job. And yeah, the join's going to be nice and nice and strong because we've tested it on on mantles and tapping out two sizes after after doing it. So realistically, um, not necessary. Also, it has its purpose. Because I've seen I've on part on forums and stuff like that, people say like use argon, it, it helps. But I, I haven't seen enough evidence to make you think you need to go be using argon on it's every not single necessary. laser. It will work with that. No. Is laser welding as strong as soldering? I think we might have covered that already. Talking about, say, if you're putting a whole new claw in when you're talking about strength, again, if it's a thick claw, if you can get a V in there to then fill up with the laser wire, it's not a technique just for ring sizing. If there's anything that you think, is this going to weld through to the middle? Mm. And if you don't think it is, file a V in, and yeah. that's going to ensure that you've got your strength. Where solder runs into something, mm -hmm. what we're effectively doing is we're fusing the metal together. Yeah. So you want to sort of open it and add the metal so that you've got the strength. Yeah. And, and is there any part of it, I mean, for instance, with regards to chain fixes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've seen with chain fixes, when you bring the loop around and you're running all the way around, you pretty much have a solid, but that's a very fine piece of metal. And that's In that case, you're not working with these, you're just running no, the, just the surface running because you're around. not... Even some it, jump rings, to, obviously, depending on the thickness of the yeah, jump rings, yeah, you, yeah. you can get away with it. And if you've got the right power, with the chains especially, mm. that one shot is enough. Sometimes you can bring it up and say, oh, I don't, I've, I've lost it. Yeah, Because yeah. it's that clean. You're not heating up 10 links either side of yeah, that yeah, one yeah. link. What are the limitations besides the size of the laser that the Dado has? Let's stop there. Yeah, so firstly, power, of course. So there is, uh, the Dado 1 is 10.8 joules, the Dado 2 is 15 joules. Um, so that doesn't sound like a lot of power compared to what we've got behind us here with 200 joules, 250, uh. 225, sorry, that is now. And that's, uh, I want to say 245 if I remember correctly. Um, so obviously, there's, it's a lot less power. With these big machines, you, you're, all the time you're using a fraction of what you're they can. barely stressing them to oh, even right. work on silver. Right. With the data, you'll be using obviously more of its capability. You'll probably sometimes you'll be using full power to, to work on silver, and mm. that's fine. That's what it's made there for. If you're doing lots of repairs and you had to do ten silver resizes back to back, the data is going to overheat because it's not it's not made for that kind of production, that kind of repair. Uh, amount constantly running for two hours, say, on really high power. Realistically, right, it'll right. overheat. That's one limitation. It's more industrial, the bigger machines versus yeah, the data, which is, course. you know, it is a laser machine. It will do what you want it to do. Yeah. But if you are running an industrial workshop where mm. you're pushing repairs through the whole day constantly, yeah. 
the bigger machine will handle it better. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for people sort of independent. Uh, people say using it to manufacture, using it to do some repairs, mm. the Dado is an amazing fit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for small workshops, it's not as obviously it's not a ten thousand pound investment straight off the bat mm. as well. So that that helps, of course. But yeah, in terms of it's the length of use, if you're looking to use high power for a long time, the Dado is going to overheat and it will need a little break. All ah, right, okay. So um, for my application, for instance, where I'm working in my own workshop, a small studio. Mm -hmm. We're doing indi individual work for people. Yeah. Then that that kind of thing would be perfect. But yeah. if you if you say, for instance, running a workshop with you know twelve different goldsmiths and you have one guy on a laser that sits there the whole day, then you probably want to be looking at the yeah. bigger machine. Definitely. All right. Yeah. With laser welding, when you first get one, you'll use it for the things you had in mind, mm. platinum resizes and stuff like that. You'll then try some other stuff, mm. and you'll keep trying, and then you'll end up using it for more and for more. So so two years down the line. You're going to be you, buying the big one anyway. You want you <laughs> might be upgrading to a big one because you the the technology goes that way. Yeah, and yeah. it opens opens your eyes up to things that maybe you would have not done before. It is one um, of those tools where you where you don't necessarily think that you might need it. Yeah, and then you realise how how important and, and what sort of function it really has in a workshop. Yeah. So as you say, it almost unlocks the sort of ability to do more quicker. Yeah. Which is, um, and then I guess that just can be scaled up to a larger. And that's it, yeah. And we, but we do trade ups and things like that. So if okay. sort of with, from the Dados going to a bigger machine, that, that's something that we can help out with. How does the low power that the Dado uses affect the usability and what advantages do the bigger expensive lasers have? Yeah. So we've, we've pretty much discussed yeah. that. Yeah, having the extra power Power does make your life easier, of course, as well. So um, mm. it's going to melt the wire easier. It's going to melt quicker. You can increase the amount of shots you're firing per second. Mm. Mm. I think the for me the main difference is, um, and it's not a knock on the data necessarily because you have to work to the data a little bit mm. in terms of the amount of time you're using it and the power that you have. The big machines are fully. You're in, you have a lot of control mm. in terms of the parameters that you're using. Price-wise, it's half the price of the bigger machine. Of so course, you know, yeah. if, you, if, you, if the application will, st you'll still be able to get to the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except, 100%. you know, uh, exactly. You know, it's one. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Wonder how well it deals with white gold and silver, as they tend to have problems with most laser machines. We've touched on the white, on the silver metal as well. White gold, I haven't had an issue with with the Dado. I don't know if you know uh, it's a similar concept, perhaps, with the Sharpie. But uh, in my experience, again, um, I would say it's quite shiny, mm. so it's going to reflect some of the laser off. And having obviously it being white gold, it would be a little bit more conductive, if I'm mm. right. Mm. So um, yeah, that's where black markers and stuff like that will, will so help. They call black marker laser flux. I do that. <laughs> uh, some people. Fair um, enough. It's a good way to look at it because it, it's like turning the power up five yeah. seconds. Yeah. Um, it just helps the metal absorb the laser shot nicely, Got it. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. So that that would that should solve any any problems. What I try to tell people not to get bogged down in settings. Yeah. With numbers, with colours, with this width, that width. Start low. Start with a small spot if you're making a strong join. Mm. Start low and add more power until you're getting the result that you want. It's experimentation, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's getting, the easiest getting, way. Getting to know the machine and. and so we send guides and stuff with every machine mm. and like presets on the bigger machine to give you a, a starting point. But the best thing to do is not say I need to use power 10 on silver. Yeah. Just start low and add more until you get yeah. the reaction that you want. The strength, the, the, the laser wires melting, the joins fusing nicely. Yeah. And everything, and you also you get used to the noise. You get tuned in with your laser, so sort of where it's making a good join, it's making a snap. Yeah, yeah. Where the laser's not got enough power, it's kind of the machine sounds like a dull thud when you're hitting yeah. the metal. Yeah. When you're when you're blowing holes through stuff, it's bang. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, that's why it's best to start low and add more until you're getting the reaction that you want, yeah. and you will. It will get there. It's just yeah. not being afraid. Sometimes you are going to have to ramp that power up. The Dado is a great place to start because yeah. you've not got as many settings. So yeah. it's purely power and size of the beam that you need to worry about. I personally haven't had simple. problems with white gold or any gold. It's mainly been the silver. Yeah. You know. This is a question again that I think we might have jumped up with the two. The two. Um, any difference between the Dado one and two? I'm looking into getting one, but I don't know uh, if it's worth the increase in price. So it's 500 pound is the difference in price. Um, 
if 50% more power, um, which is really great for that silver work. You can fire between one and four shots per second. So say if you are doing a resize and you've put a piece in, you're gonna be able to do that job a bit quicker because you can fire more shots at a time. Mm. You've got 25 power settings. So it's got a bit more versatility as well because something when the machine first came out, it had 12 settings initially for Dado 2. We were a bit like, yes, okay, it's got more power, but we've got big jumps in power. So we, we asked the factory, like, we need more settings right, right, to right. sort of spread the power out a little bit. So that's where we've ended up with 25. Then we had power one was actually quite strong still. Okay. So we worked with, again, advised the factory, like, can we lower power one because we've lost the ability to work on the chains yeah. and things like that. You know, the feedback from people like yourself and yeah. other people, we, we do take it on board and, and, the and go and speak to the factory and they, and they, they do they... listen, yeah. This is an Italian machine? Yeah, yeah, right. made by Electrolaser. Electrolaser, right, okay. And that, yeah, so we've lowered power one to then make it better on, yeah. say, something hollow, something really fine chains. Obviously, things are going that way you know, for repairs yeah. and stuff, so we need to have a machine that can cover all of it. Being as versatile as it possibly can. Yeah. So the, the two is a little bit more versatile with yeah. regards to its sensitivity on its, yeah. its, on its laser uh, strength. Yeah. And also you have 50% more power, which helps with things like silver, for instance. Yeah. We've had people upgrade from one to the other as well. Uh, say, getting towards the end of the warranty of the Dado 1, they looked into the Dado 2, tried it out and loved it. So mm. they've, mm. they've traded up. Um, the Dado 2, but there's still absolutely nothing wrong with the Dado 1. They're, yeah. they're still cracking little machines. It's just, um, yeah, they've made an improvement. And it's nice to know that the factory listens to what people yeah. want. I mean, that's pretty much how we run our channel and our work as well, you know, yeah. sort of steer it with what people actually need. Yeah, yeah, and it's exactly what, that's what we advise and that's what they, they've, it's nice to, like say, work with people that are happy to make changes to make it, make the machine better. Next question, how powerful is the laser? This is this is a an interesting question because it's a relative. Yeah, because you've got a thing. You've got the goes in joules, and you've got sort of ten point eight and fifteen joules on here. Then you've got we've got right, machines, then bigger lasers that work range from thirty five joules up to two hundred and fifty. So there really is a massive why, but it's also about there's peak power as well and the sort of uh, kilowatts. So the bigger machines go up in 0.1 kilowatt. Um, so it's kind of... The, the, the data will do what you want it to do. The yeah. bigger machines will do it with better ease. But you, like you were mentioning earlier, you're not necessarily using all the power of the bigger no. machines. They just do it with more ease. Yeah. Are there any limitations compared to something like a Rofen? Mm -hmm. um, I want to be able to polish with it and join 18 karat and platinum. So joining platinum and 18 karat, that's been discussed. Yes, it will join 18 karat and platinum. Mm -hmm. The polishing, is that what you're referring where it spreads out? Does it actually give I it think polish? I think some people use it, say, uh, you've got a casting. With um, the porosity? Yeah, well with porosity, yes, you can fill that in. Absolutely no problem, you can do that on, on the Dado. Um, some people want to use it to shine up the inside of the settings. Right. So really wide beam and low power, so you're not actually changing the shape in any way. Mm. It just gives the inside of the setting a bit more of a shine because yeah. it takes off that layer of the casting yeah. to get down to the, the I guess that's, that's one of the features that I must point out of, of, of a laser machine, which I really enjoy as well, is that you, you have unaccessible areas yes. for something like a, a brush, for instance, to get into. Um, and as you say with castings, where you have some roughness mm -hmm. in the inside, you know, and you can't get a brush in there. And I think this might be what they're talking about. With Polishing by filling in porosity on castings, of course, yeah. yeah. You can fill those in, build them up above the surface, file them back, job done. And obviously, yeah, and polish them up. But in terms of like full polishing, it's not, you do have to do some You know, it's after. a funny question if, you, if you're looking at it, because as a goldsmith, that would be a separate process altogether. Yeah. But I think by just talking to you, the, you know, it sort of made more sense to me with regards to what they, and I'm hoping this is what you were asking, the dice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Dado is dice in Italian. Oh, is that so? Yeah. All right. Um, in terms of why, I guess it's a fun gimmick. Um, yeah. I, it's the only. Uh, yeah, I don't have a good answer for you. <laughs> As not, I didn't, not well, making it, the it'll, machine. It'll be folklore from your onwards. It will be speculation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, yeah. All right, Matt, I really appreciate your time, man. No um, we've, we've, we've 
I've looked at these videos, I've not found something that has the substance that I think that, that sometimes you find that people show you something, but mm -hmm. I really wanted to go into depth with this so that if anybody that has any questions with regards to this, this particular machine, yeah. has as many of the answers as they possibly can get. So I really appreciate your time. Thank no you problem. very much for, uh, for sharing Happy it with to us. Help. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. That was all the questions that we received, and I think that answered just about all the questions that I personally had on laser welding. I've been using laser welders now for a little while, and I'm learning the whole time, but it is definitely a tool in your arsenal. We're also encouraging you to add more questions into the comments. We will take those questions and we are planning to do a live with them, a follow up to this video of sorts on Instagram and on YouTube. And you could find us on Instagram under Yaku the Jeweler. Feel free to give us a follow there. Also, if you enjoy the content that we produce this side, it would be really nice if you give this video a like, subscribe, and as you know, the bell icon. Until next week, thank you very much for watching. As per usual, lots of love. Bye. <laughs>